Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with a bit of an oldie but goodie. I'm playing with Necros using Bahamut Shark and Totally Awesome as an attempted surrogate-like supplement to add some power and consistency and recovery back to the deck. Now, I am playing with Ariel, the, uh, the new Necros card, the Priestess of the Necros, but if you want to make this deck TCG legal, literally all you have to do is swap this for a second Great Sorcerer. That is what I'd be playing in place of it. It'd be either a second Dance Princess or a second Great Sorcerer. But as you can see in this deck, there's not anything uh, like Benton or anything like that that you can see them in the side deck. Ultimately, it just didn't really support this uh, version of the deck very well. And it just put too much strain on your cycle plays and stuff like that. So ultimately, I ended up cutting it in favor of just other cards like playing the Gigabytes to allow you to make rank 4s easier, making the Cataster and the Exa slots available, because being able to tribute Exa and being able to search Cataster to use that again as more rank 4 fuel, like that's just a, that's just a, big, uh, a big deal in my eyes for uh, how I think this deck needs to be played, because you need to be able to make multiple rank 4s almost every single turn, and those rank 4s usually consist of Digusto Emerald as well as Bahamut Shark and Toad. Now. Fortunately, because the Necros matchup is not prevalent, because this deck has been neutered, you get to leave your cards on board, and that's why there's a lot of cards that I'm playing that involve getting effects when tributed, like your Great Sorcerers, your Ariel, your Dance Princess, your Exa, and then even the Perform Age Trick Clown is here as a notable addition that gets that sort of benefit. And that's honestly why they are here, is just so you can put Valkyrus on board and you can start turboing into your deck by drawing cards every turn. Exa hits some odd levels. Ariel kind of tries to do that, but it has to be on the board, so Exa is just a little bit better because it also just has a tribute effect that allows you to search for something that allows you to continue to meld your board. Uh, things like that. But overall, this is just a pretty like cookie cutter list as far as uh, as far as far I'm aware. And this is just what I've been playtesting with off and on. And uh, so I figured I'd play it for a video or two. But so let's just not uh, waste any more time. Let's just jump straight into the first game and see how well it does, and see what kind of uh, kind of players we can get access to today. Because this is actually probably prime time on Yu-Gi-Oh Pro. But anyway, let's just jump straight into the first game. All right. So I am still playing against randoms because honestly, there's just there's not a lot of time between what I'm doing now and what I'm trying to do with um, with setting up the. Uh, the Discord server and the uh, and the Patreon, so I wanted to get a backlog of videos going. So there's a there's a reason that I'm playing this kind of uh, stuff. But so I'm just gonna use this with the Maxis in hand. He won Rock Paper Scissors and told me to go first, so kind of uh, kind of suspect, but it's all right. And what I will do is I will ditch Dance Princess because I'd rather add that back to my hand and then summon Toad. So. I just one for one my way into a Toad and a Bahamut Shark, which is incredibly weak considering I'm doing no Necros plays whatsoever. Uh, but I do have Max C's, which are good follow-up cards. They are good just cards that allow you to do things. Black Wings, really. Alright, well I'm going to go ahead and activate this here because I know that there's a ton of inherent special summon cards in his deck in the form of Gale, in the form of Bora. Uh, there's a bunch of different stuff. But so Gale doing this, I think I'm just going to negate it. And I'm going to take your Gale, and I'm going to get back my Dance Princess, which, since I drew another Gigabyte, is going to allow me to just make another Bahamut Shark next turn. Um, so it's not really that big of an issue. Like I'm, I'm fine with playing this deck on this pace until my opponent forces me to have to have Rituals. Um, like that's that's something that I'm fine with doing. So really, your play with Sirocco, Special Gale, try to use Gale to force this when you could have attacked over it by synchroing up into something. And then pass turn, okay, what is this, like Icarus attack? Uh, well, if it is Icarus attack or something like that, I'm just going to use this first. That's actually really good. Um, I'm just going to use this first to go into another Toad, or I can just attack, because if this is Icarus attack, then I definitely am going to be fine with just having this one card here. So yeah, we'll, we'll just feel out the waters a bit. Like I haven't drawn any of my Necros engine other than Dance Princess and Exa. So. I find that a bit hilarious. Um, so I took the risk of the Kalut there, but ultimately I think it's uh, I think it was fine. So we'll activate this here and uh, summon another Toad, and then from here I can normal summon Trick Clown, Special Gigabyte, and I can make a uh, Digusto Emerald and shuffle the first Toad back as long as well as the Max C. Like um, 
Well, I'm gonna take that. That's gonna be my card now. That's gonna be my card now. Um, set it, yes. I will set it, and I'll use Toad to, I guess, recover Gigabyte, just so I can keep things moving, or I could just recover Toad again. I could go Normal Dance Princess, Special Gigabyte, make Bahamut, get another Toad. Uh, so yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll just shuffle back the Toad, because at this point, like I said, I'm literally not feeling pressured because he's playing Black Wings 1 and 2. I've got uh, plenty of time to do things, because I can just add Gigabyte back off of the, uh, off of the next summon. Really? Bottomless here? Okay. Um, well, that's fine. You've given me your time space, and I've got a max C in the hand, so I guess I'm fine with this. Um, it would have been bottomless. I would rather that get bottomless than my Trick Clown, because this is recoverable off of Exa getting banished, which can't happen off the uh, off the Fusion, but uh, or not Fusion. Um, I've been playing way too many other decks. Uh, off of the... Uh, it's recoverable off of me using this with, like, Exa Miro. Uh, Miro. Ugh, I can't speak. Okay, hey, Necro's cards. We will start messing with these. Um, and the thing is, like, he can't play into this Max C because he knows I have Time Space Trap Hole because he gave it to me. Um, like, yeah, cool. Um, you can leave that there if you want. Yeah, that's that's going to be left. So he can attack with these. And then I'm just going to use this next turn alongside all of these cards that I have access to because I could go... Um, Brianak into, I can go Sinju into Colossalus, into Mirror, Brianak into Valk, um, and so I could use those with, uh, with, um, the, the Gigabyte will be able to summon itself, I'll be able to Tribute Exa, get Search for Cataster, and yeah, this is just, this is really good in, in, uh, in terms of what I have access to for myself, but, he kind of really has to do something with these, or else he's just not going to stand any sort of chance in the game. Alright, so what are you making? This is a 6, so his options are like Red Wyvern, Coral Dragon. Oh, No Thung. Okay. Sure. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, put this back into your extra deck because you knew that I had this, and I honestly don't really want this card anymore. And at this point, I don't want you getting that card out of your hand because I can Trishula you. Uh, so that's neat. So yeah, now at this point I'm actually playing the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, the only reason I'm playing this game now is because my opponent was playing a deck like Black Wings, and I was able to stun him out with uh, the Totally Awesome and the uh, and the Max Seas. But honestly, the Max Seas would have been really good against any other deck in the format as well, so can't really say too much negatively about it. Uh, but what I can do here is that I can, um, I can add Kaleidoscope here, because I can summon Sinju, search for... Um, I can summon Sinju, search uh, the uh, the Unicor. If this gets Valor, I can just search Unicor with uh, Brianak. And then I'm going to be able to do a very extensive play with Kaleidoscope, Unicor, making another Bahamut Shark, uh, making uh, Toad, and doing all sorts of stuff. But, uh, yeah. So we'll send this from Extract to Grave, summon the Unicor. This will trigger, allowing me to search for the mirror, and then I can use the Brianak to uh, summon to uh, to search for Valk here, and I'm going to summon the Valk. Um, I could summon the Trish and just end the game, but I could actually just summon Valk and just power myself into my engine further, and that's honestly what I'd rather do because I can make two rank fours this turn. Sea Cleaner, you've popped up again. How nice of you to show your face. I can close you, and you won't capture on the render. So, good for me, eh? Um, but so I can banish the, uh, the Clausulus and tribute the Exa um, to summon this. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to banish this from Grave and tribute this from Hand, summon Exa, or summon uh, Valk, the Exa will trigger, searching for Cataster, and then I have uh, things that I can do here. So what I can do is I can make Bahamut Shark and I can summon Toad and then I can just tribute the Bahamut Shark off with, uh, with the Valkyrus. Uh, it's something that's actually pretty easy to do, or I could just make Emerald here first, but I actually can't make Emerald first um, because I need the two waters to exist for Bahamut Shark. So that's what's uh, that's what's important here. So we'll summon this Bahamut Shark, and I'll uh, use this Valkyrus, and I'm going to get rid of the Trick Clown in my hand. I can get rid of the Trish too, it doesn't really matter, but I'd actually just rather get rid of this one. And then the Trick Clown's effect will activate summoning itself, so I'm just popping off for no apparent reason. So, I mean, this deck does work well when it starts functioning, but until it starts functioning, that's when you, uh, that's when you run into problems. And those problems being things like, what am I doing with my life? 
how do I make this play work? Stuff like that is the ultimate uh, is the ultimate like problem this deck has. But I could have trished here, got this card, got this card, and uh, taken another card. But at this point, it's fine because Totally Awesome is such a surrogate for like how you get to play this deck because you don't really need to uh, need to summon Trishula every game anymore. It's it's very much you could just use Trish as protection for your board Valks and stuff like that, where your opponent has to out the Valk and out your other stuff. But so from here, we use Bahamut Shark, summon Toad, and then we will use Emerald here to detach. And the Trick Clown has already used its effect, so we'll detach this, putting back this, putting back a Toad, and also putting back Brianak. Well, no, Brianak can get added back off of uh, off of the uh, Toad dying, so we'll put back a Max Save. So that seems fine. Um, so I can just put these back, and from here, that's an instant fusion, so I could actually make a third rank for this turn if I had the space, but I do not have the space. Now, I could summon Exa uh, just for free, just to have it, and that's the thing, is that now I actually have access into summoning Trishula next turn as well, uh, rather effectively, even without the Toad triggering. Um, I could summon Sinju and get access to uh, to Clausalus, Clausalus discard for... Um, for uh, for the things, and then that's just uh, fine and dandy from there. But uh, so battle phase over my emerald, that seems logical, yeah. And then the trick clown will come back, so I can just summon Sinju and make another uh, emerald next turn. Like, I really actually do want to up the amount of trick clowns in the deck, but that would require cutting like gigabyte down to two, uh, because trick clown just being able to recur itself over and over again to make rank fours possible in an easy manner as well as being a good card to discard off Valkyrus, is just, uh, is, is really neat and really ideal, I guess, is what I'm looking for here in terms of words to speak. But, so, we'll summon this Sinju, we'll use Sinju to search, and I have access to way too many rank fours this turn, this is just not fair. Um, not fair at all. So, we'll add Unicor, and I'll make, uh, Emerald, shuffle back Emerald. Um, I am still playing two Emeralds because you can effectively make Emeralds infinite. Emerald over Emerald. And uh, I'll just, um, I'll do that. Now, what I can do here is I can activate this to add back Brianak first, which I will do. Um, so we'll add back Brianak, and I'll use Brianak to add Dance Princess. Or no, Dance Princess is here. So I definitely have to summon one back if I want to get access to it. Um, so that's that's fine. I'm okay with that. Um, I'd have to banish Exa to get access to that back, so I'm kind of okay with that. But we'll get Great Sorcerer here. And uh, Great Sorcerer can get tributed off of this Valkyrus to uh, get its effect. But so from here, we'll use the Emerald, and we'll use Emerald to shuffle back Emerald, and we will shuffle back the Unicorn, and we will shuffle back uh, another Max C. Just why not? Why not? Add the defensive lines back to the main deck. That seems like the more valuable uh, option. Uh, cycle, that's actually really strong. Um, but uh, from here, I get to just activate this and summon another Toad. Even though it's more damage to attack with this, it's just I I want I want salt, I want to rub salt into the wounds. But we'll activate this. I do not need access to the Bahamut Shark anymore because it is like it's dead in terms of its effect has been used. And now Great Sorcerer here can add um, can add Unicorn, and so I'm going to put Unicorn on the board. These tribute themselves for costs in the gate. So, uh, so like it's just pretty simple for how that interaction works, right? They tribute for cost; they're no longer on field. Um, so that's easy, right? I'm just gonna start dumping cards out of my hand, uh, like that Manju. So these are negated, but this tributes itself as cost to negate, so it will still force its way through, and uh, that's fine for that. And I have a Max C in hand again, so shit, man, right? Uh, but so this this will die and then I just attack him for game. So I mean I guess I guess there's that I think I'm gonna offer a rematch to this guy and s try to see more of his Blackwing deck uh, Just to see how that one goes Because if he accepts a rematch then that would be amazing. He did not accept my rematch He didn't take too kindly to the prospect of a rematch and I'm gonna go second again uh, Which is fine because it's Necros. I can Trishula him going second if my hand can support it So I'm not too worried about it um, in terms of like what I could have. I could have, again, I could have max C's. I can have a bunch of different things. Uh, but so this hand is pretty good for going second. Oh, he let me go first. Well, kind sir, I don't know if you understand, 
but that was probably a mistake. Um, so what I get to do here is I can I can tribute I can trigger Dance Princess pretty effectively. Um, I can normal summon this, get Kaleidoscope. Um, I can normal summon this and get Brio. Brio will get Exa, which I can then use this to get Kaleidoscope. Summon this. The uh, the Herald of the Arc Light will get uh, uh, will get Mirror. I can summon this, and then I'll be able to make a Bahama Shark. Yep. Yeah. All right. So that's what we'll go with. Um, now he has no cards in his extra deck, so every time I see that, I expect it to be either Exodia or Domain Monarchs. Um, but so from here, this should be uh, this should be pretty fine and dandy in my favor if everything goes according to plan. If he doesn't have a max C, then that will be fine. Um, that will be great for me, in fact. Uh, but so I'm just going to use Herald of the Arclight. The Herald is going to search for Exomir, um, and then I'm going to use Brianak to search for uh, for Exa, 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 Exa. There you are. And then I will be able to use the mirror here to summon Valk, banishing the Colossalus and tributing Exa. And so from here, the Exa's effect will activate, adding Cataster. And then the Cataster will be able to summon back the Dance Princess after I tribute off. Um, and the Dance Princess is going to add back the Colossalus. So this is actually a really good um, cycling of plays. Because I can pop these, draw two. The Dance Princess will activate, adding back Colossalus, and then I can use Cataster here to bring back my Dance Princess and overlay it with the Unicorn and detach uh, off Bahamut Shark for Toad. So that was a very good cycling of hand in terms uh, in terms of what it allowed uh, to happen. Because now I have access to Trish, so this can't be targeted. I've got access to this, which is not the best, but I can use it with Cycle. And so I can also tribute it off for Valkyrus. So there's uh, multiple different ways that I can uh, that I can make things happen. So, oh, he is playing Monarchs. He is legitimately just playing Monarchs. Um, okay. Well, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, um, and I'm so this negates your normal summon for the turn. So there's that. And I'm going to take it and actually set it because I would love to have extra cards to tribute off for Valkyrus. Maxi, did you you must have just drawn that? There's no way you can make me believe um, that you didn't just draw that card. Uh, but using it there is kind of all right. Can't argue against it. Uh, but so I'll add Unicorn back because Unicorn can add back Brio, which can go further. Um, and then this card, I can use Valk to tribute the Eidos and the Ariel to draw two. Ariel will search Great Sorcerer. That's the only one that's left. But if I draw something like Manju Sinju or Trick Clown, or uh, hell, even like Gigabyte, um, I'll be able to uh, I'll be able to make an Emerald first, and then I will be able to uh, then I'll be able to shuffle back more targets for Ariel, so I don't draw the last target in my deck being Great Sorcerer off of the Valk. So yeah, he's just playing Monarchs. There's Gigabyte. Hell yeah. All right. Well, so what I have access to now is that I can make Emerald. Um, but I don't actually think I really want to first now that I'm like thinking about it But I'm going to use this to get uh, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get uh, like the um, The uh, what is this? This is the first mark uh, Let's see if some in this way you can discard one card then declare an attribute uh, Okay Cannot special some monsters except this monster with this attribute. Okay um, Easy all right, so I'm gonna add the mirror here because I'm actually going to use it. Um, I'm gonna use it in uh, the way to make more rank force. So I'm gonna summon the Trish. Uh, pretty simply put, I'm gonna summon Trishula. Uh, after I use this, I'm gonna tribute the Ariel and I'm gonna tribute the Eidos so that it goes to his graveyard, and then I'm gonna banish it off Trish. Uh, so that should be pretty clear cut. So we'll do this. Pop these two cards. I did not draw the monster, so that's good. And I've got Instant Fusion for Norden, which is better. Um, now I can actually use Bahamut Shark here to go ahead and go into Toad, just so that if he has something like either, um, then it's not going to be... Well, he, he can't have something like either, um, because he doesn't have a Monarch Spell or Trap and Grave. So we just get to basically run wild and free, I think. I think that's how this goes. Is I haven't Normal Summoned yet either. Um, so I can just, yeah, I can activate this. And I'm going to summon Trishula, 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to banish the, uh, I'm going to banish Exa, and I'm going to banish the Ariel. Yeah? Ariel, maybe? I can banish Ariel, it would come back, and then there would be that. Yeah, so it's, it's very much more effective to use it this way. Uh, but so Ariel will come back, Trishula will use its effect. I'll take a card, I'll take this, and I'll take his Eidos. So uh, that was a Mega Thistalos. So that's pretty good. And then I get to special summon this because I do have this spellcaster on board because of the uh, Valkyrus. So there is that. And then I get to make a Digesto Emerald, which I can then utilize to my advantage. And then I can just summon a totally awesome after I attack him for basically literally everything. Um, in fact, is this game? Yes, these are a lot of big numbers. There's no way this isn't game. <laughs> There's no way you can look me in the eye and tell me that this is not game. Uh, but so we'll put back this, we'll put back a Toad, and we will put back uh, Herald of the Arclight because I would love to be able to summon the uh, Unicorn out of my hand. I can normal summon this. And I'm not going to get Toad, but this is still just game. And I'm going to get uh, a Valk because this seems... This seems very fluid and nice and fine. And I can activate this to add back Brio. And I can then activate Brio to go ahead and add Dance Princess so that I already have that card for next turn. That Dance Princess is under Bahama Shark. Never mind. Um, I can add Catastor so that the Dance Princess under the Bahama Shark can get summoned and then I can tribute it off. Um, that is the, that's the idea of what we're going for here. And uh, so yeah. I think I'll play one more game for this video just to make it a bit lengthier as well because, I mean, it's Necros. I enjoy playing this deck. Um, and, like, it's actually functioning. Holy shit! So, now do I think it's anything meta-defining? No, not at all. But I'm going to request a rematch and see if he takes it. Because if he takes it, then, I mean, one, that means I get to go first again. But, otherwise, it's fine. He as well did not accept my rematch. These people just... These, these hoes ain't loyal. Okay, well, we're going to go first this one. We actually get to choose to go first this one, and that's that's neat. So upstart into seeing what I get to draw next, and then manjuing into hopefully something real. Um, that would be that would be good. That would be cool. And then I'd also be able to have the Valkyrus backing up whatever's on my board. Uh, so that'd be neat. That's a Sinju. Damn it. That's actually not really good. <laughs> uh, but what I have access to here is that I can I can normal summon this. Um, I can normal summon Sinju, I can add Colossalus, discard it, and then that makes my Valk alive, and that's just, that's the extent of my play. <laughs> um, now, I might actually up this deck's number of cards, considerably. Um, I've actually thought about making this deck like 48 cards, and in that 48 cards, having the, uh, the, uh, Cyber Angel Bentons, as well as having, um, as well as having the Brilliant Fusion engine, having uh, a Garnet, and having three Brilliant Fusion, and then having some other random card, maybe like just another another big like uh, another big monster to add, like another one of the Necros cards, uh, something like that. I've, or maybe just another Trick Clown. That probably makes them more. That probably makes more sense. Uh, but yeah, just increasing the deck's size to 48, just to implement more cards that I know that I want to run, <laughs> because. Uh, I know that I want to run them, I just can't find space in 40 cards. So uh, there's the uh, there's the idea and prospects there. But So I'm literally just going to pass my turn, I mean if he Rhapsodies me and gets my colossal out of Grave, then I mean, got me duelist, got me dueler mans. But uh, let's see, this uh, Sinju is going to exist, if it stays on the board through my Valkyris, I'm going to be able to immediately summon Manju, make a rank 4. I can make like a, I could make an emerald. Um, if I played King of the Feralimps, um, which is definitely a card I've thought about running, but there's not really a room. I guess I could cut Star Eater because it almost never comes up. Um, Onslaught of the Fire Kings. Whoa! I haven't seen this card in a hot minute. I have not seen this card in years. Ooh, what are we gonna have today? What spicy, spicy, spicy stuff is gonna happen today? I'm actually really curious and really excited to see if it's gonna be something cool like true king fire king maybe that's a deck idea for another video i could play holy shit i haven't even considered that um true king scraps um is another option there's a lot of true king variants that you can just play that are all really cool but so okay this is just a uh, three axis fire fist which uh he's going off under the max c which is fine i mean honestly it's it's 100 
uh, like honestly fine. He gets to summon Horse Prince here. Um, it's Horse Prince is going to summon Rooster from deck. If he has a, uh, a um, Fire Formation card, he's going to be able to swap it out. Um, that's pretty good. Or he could just summon Bear. Wait, no, it has to be a level 5. High, it has to be a level 3 Fire Monster. So you can summon Lone Fire. Oh, wait, what is this? Is uh, This one lets him set a Fire Formation. Okay, so he's going to get the Fire Formation. He can set it. Um, he can get like Tenki and set it and then flip it, search, and then trade it out for Tensu to get whatever he searched on the board. Very neat. I really like these interactions. I completely forgot about Raven's uh, floating effect. Or he could do Tensu, so I guess he already has something in his hand that he already wants. Um, but he has to be able to play through Valkyrus, or else there's not really going to be any main point in this. Um, but he can't summon level 5 or higher, so I guess I'm kind of okay in that right. But uh, Tensu for another Raven. Okay. Uh, so what is your main goal here with summoning all these? I remember when these cards were originally announced back in like 2012 when they were in the OCG and they were like this, those uh, those those gold uh, golden cards, those like special gold jump cards or something. Um, the Xyz, uh, this guy, uh, Lion Emperor, and then Horse Prince, and then uh, Spirit were all uh, were all just like these weird promo cards, and it was so cool looking at it, and then the rest of the cards came out, and it was so cool, and then we just never got to play this deck in the TCG, we never got to play 3 Axis Fire Fist, but I mean, it is a deck that is playable now, I guess, um, in the essence of, like, how it's operating currently, you do have the deck at full power, but the problem is, is that it's just been heavily power creeped by the time we got our, uh, our third spirit back, so, I'll activate this, uh, just to get that off the board, and I've got a hand full of things that I get to use. Um, now, what does he have in his hand? He has he has a Tensu that he did not swap out for a Tenki, so I find that a bit strange. But, uh, this survived, which means I get to start my turn with a Diamond Dyer on this card. Um, that's going to be the thing here that happens, is I'm going to Diamond Dyer this card, and I'm going to be able to make multiple Rank 4s this turn, um, after I get my search for this, because I'm going to be able to use this to search for... Uh, I'm going to search for Colossalus, so that I can get my access into uh, ritual spells. And then I'm just going to go Diamond Dyer pop this. If it's a Fire Formation card like Tencent or uh, something like that, then I'm going to be fine with that because this clears itself off the board. And then I'm going to be able to not worry about this as a threat. And then I'm just going to be able to go for the throat because I'm going to be able to Kaleidoscope out the Valk and the Unicorn. Um, and then I'm going to be able to Tribute um, an Exa, or not even Exa, maybe something like Dance Princess, or, uh, or Ariel, maybe. Um, I could search Ariel with, uh, Brianac, and, okay, so that's a bottomless. That's actually very, very good, um, that I was able to hit that. But, so yeah, what we'll do is we'll activate this here, this Kaleidoscope, and I'm going to summon the Valk and the, uh, and the Unicorn. Uh, by using the Ultimaya Zulkin as a level 12, summon these two, and then I will use I will use the Brio here. I really wish I hadn't drawn this Kataster. Makes it a bit odd. Um, and I actually just didn't have to search Colossus because I do have access to Dance Princess. Uh, but I mean, I guess it's okay to have multiples. Um, I can add Ariel, and I can add either of these. That seems pretty cool. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll uh, we'll just do that. That seems uh, like a better interaction anyway. So the Valk will be able to pop the Great Sorcerer and the Ariel out of my hand, so I'll be able to search. Um, now, uh, I could search Valks, and um, there's a Rota, so there's another, <laughs> there's another Clausulus, because Shrit's banned, rape. Um, I have thought about playing, like, um, what is his name? His, uh, the uh, Assault Halberd. I've thought about playing that. No, not Assault Halberd, Thousand Blades, which is the one that summons itself from Grave when you take damage. The one that pairs with um, Trick Clown. I just know it's one of them. <laughs> That's the extent of my knowledge. Um, but so the Cataster is there. I can, um, yeah, I'm going to be able to kill these pretty effectively. And I could summon another Valk. There's just no way I get to, tr there, I can't Trish him this turn, and that's a bit annoying. I probably could have if I had just sawn the play to do Dance Princess. I could have searched Trish instead of Colossus. Um, and then the Colossus would come back and I'd be able to do that there. But, as it stands, I've got plenty of cards and access in my hand. So I will uh, just do the Cataster on this. 
and uh, summon this guy and then I will be able to go into a Bahamut Shark attack over both of these and then I will be able to make a totally awesome play and so uh, that would be pretty good yeah at least I think so now he's got uh, Tensu which I do have to kind of respect um, but I still have another Valken hand so I don't really have to respect it too much um, so it's it's not that big of an issue but I guess you get to attack over this and attack this. I'm pretty sure I could have ended this this turn if uh, if I did see the Dance Princess play because I could have Trished. Trish removed these things. Um, I could have hit like the spirit out of his hand. There were a few different capabilities and things that I had access to before I committed to that play. But it's fine. Uh, it's fine as it stands and as it is because I get to do like just a lot of stuff. Um, next turn, I could easily just go uh, Clausalus into Cycle, bring this back, and make an Emerald, and then tribute the Exa to summon another uh, thing, or just tribute it off for Valkyrus. There's so many different capabilities and options that I have access to. And I'm going to go ahead and Rota here, uh, so that I don't draw Colossalus next turn and be like, well, shit, got me, Duelist. Um, and I'm going to use one of the Colossaluses here to go ahead and get access to another Ritual spell because I do have the capability of activating this here. There's just nothing I wanted to summon, um, because there's no like Trishula and Grave or anything like that, but I'm gonna add Cycle, because Cycle is gonna be great uh, to use with like Exa and Colossalus that spare in my hand for Valk if it dies, or something like that. Um, there's multiple different capabilities and options of what I have access to. The problem is, is that now my Valk is probably gonna go away to like a Fire Fist Bear. So like if he has, I know he has Spirit in hand, so if he has Spirit and he has Bear, He's going to be able to, like, normal spirit, bait the negation with Totally Awesome, and then summon Bear off of the uh, Tensu's additional summon. Uh, but it looks like that's just not going to be the case. It looks like he's just he's just folding. He's folding to the uh, prospects of, um, of my hand being amazing and my board being great. Um, so I guess I'm okay with that. But so I'll summon this Sinju. I'll use its effect to search for... Um, what do I want to search for here? Uh, looks like it's Trishula. <laughs> looks like Trishula is the flavor of the month. Um, I can summon Gigabyte here. A special Gigabyte. I'll make Emerald. And I will uh, I'll shuffle back my Cataster. That way I can tribute the Exa and get maximum value. So uh, there's that as an option. And uh, yeah, I just I love this deck. This deck is great. <laughs> I have always come back to this deck. And like I said, I'm probably going to increase it in size. Um, increase it in size and just make more uh, combo cards be the uh, focus. But Cataster, Brianak, and well, no, Brianak can stay Unicor and Valk. We'll go with those. I've already got a Manju, so I don't want to put back extra Jews uh, just because I don't want to draw into more of them. I want my deck to be very Jew light before I uh, before I start drawing into a lot of different things. Uh, so this is another Valk, so what I can do is I can activate this here, and I can just uh, get rid of the Exa in hand, as well as, um, what else do I want to get rid of? I think I just want to get rid of the Exa. I can get rid of Exa, and I can get rid of Emerald um, to clear space, because I can very well just make more plays and more big monsters on board. Um, but now we'll just do the Exa. That is a preparation of rights. It is time to shine. Duelist. I don't think you understand. We're doing everything and anything and everything. And that's that's a problem for my opponents. Uh, but so is this Dance Princess under here? Is that what's under here? No, it's Great Sorcerer. Do I have Dance Princess in circulation? No, I had Ariel instead. Um, so we'll do this to get Mirror. I'll be able to use Mirror uh, to summon the Trishula. And that should just be a wrap, at least I think, right? Because I can... I can uh, I can banish the Brio and the Colossalus from Grave, and that should just be fine. At this point, my deck is so thin that I can just keep drawing into these cards. Um, or I can just activate Prep, like not a dumbass, and I can um, I can add Unicorn and add back a Ritual Spell, uh, like Kaleidoscope, and then I can use Unicorn to add Brio to add Dance Princess. And then I'll have the Dance Princess set up and ready to go to add back my Brianak. So that would be uh, that'd be pretty cool. And I think that's what we're going to go with. So we'll add back the Brianak here. And the Brianak will uh, will get to trigger. Well, actually, I could have... Uh, I can actually search Dance Princess a different way. Um, I can actually use this Cataster 
to summon the Ariel um, from Grave. And I can banish Cataster and uh, and Tribute Ariel to, uh, to search Dance Princess. That's right, there's actually an alternative method of searching Dance Princess. So Ariel does fill a little bit of a void that this deck does have, um, but it's still just kind of a shitty card. Uh, like, it's literally only purpose is to use as an additional tribute, and its tribute is usually to add Dance Princess because you can banish your Brios and your Unicor, um, and your Unicor freely, meaning that you'll be able to you get this back off of uh, off of like something like Cataster, and you'll be able to keep going. So that's a solemn strike. So I guess that's fine. I guess that's fine in terms of uh, how this could have functioned. So this will add Dance Princess, and from here. I can just summon my Unicorn. Um, so once he gets done waiting, I can activate Cycle, Tribute Dance Princess, summon Unicorn, and then uh, that's going to be a lot of shit that I've got access to. I've actually got access to this still too. Like this is this is insane. I'm just doing way too much. I'm doing way too much for the sake of doing too much. But honestly, I think it's fine. Uh, but so we'll summon this from Grave, tributing this from Hand. The Dance Princess's effect will activate, and then I'll be able to add back the Cataster. So the Cataster can now summon back the Dance Princess. It's a little tiny, like, little loop, little, uh, little interaction there. I so miss this deck. I wish Shrit was legal. I would find a way to play this deck in the current format if Shrit was at at least one. Like, this deck is so powerful. But this is also why Shrit can't come back, even though, like, this is not the best example. Because I'm playing against things that arguably aren't the realist, uh, but I mean the deck is still functioning incredibly well, and that's all that needs to be. That's the only point that needs to be said. What is this? Um, I'm going to negate that. I'm going to negate it just because I've already attacked with the Toad, um, and I'm not going to recover it. And I'm going to use this. And I'm going to use it to add back my Jiggy Bite. Because then I can special Gigabyte, and I can overlay with the Unicorn and summon more Toads. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh man, I'm having way too much fun with this. I'm having way too much fun. I'm, I miss this era of Yu-Gi-Oh. I miss this deck. I miss everything about it. I might end up playing this at a regional once I get like my invite. I might play this deck specifically because I feel like the deck could potentially maybe do something. Um, in a rogue aspect like it's definitely it's definitely the still remains to be some of the strongest cards ever printed I mean it's still necros let's be completely real it is still necros why are you waiting are you just waiting so that I don't like attack you or so that like I leave that's not gonna happen here I'll just continue talking about how I love necros for the next two minutes of this video and that will be just that it'll it'll be so easy for me to just keep talking about how much I love this deck because think about it it's a ritual archetype that was the best deck it was the boogeyman it held the throne people were arguing that oh it wasn't the undisputed best deck at the time bullshit every deck that wasn't necros was maining cards to beat necros what can you call that if not the best deck <laughs> exactly you can't come up with a response to that because if every deck is maining cards specifically to beat Necros and nothing else, then holy shit, there must be something about this deck that makes it better than everything else, right? So it, it was the top of the totem pole. And this is a blue deck. This is a deck of ritual monsters. Oh, it's such a fun mechanic. It's such a fun deck. But anyway, I'm going to cut the video here. It's a bit longer, but I mean, hey... Uh, that's what people seem to like, and I mean, might as well, right? Might as well try and appease people, but anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Let me know if you want me to keep playing this deck. Let me know if you want to do, uh, if you want me to change some things around, if you have any suggestions, if you want me to play the 48 card version that I've been theorying um, during the course of this video, as well as like during other times in my life. Just let me know. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you like this video, definitely be sure to like. If you're new here, maybe consider subscribing. It helps me out a ton and helps the channel and community within it grow a lot and helps support me a ton and helps make me continue to make content. So if you're an oldie, an old subscriber, a legendary subscriber, and you want to see more content, then you know what to do. Like the videos. If you're a new person and you want to see more content from me, 
then there's that fancy little subscribe button right there just waiting for you but other than that check out the links on the screen and maybe go check out my channel itself to find more videos you might like there's a thousand plus uploads over there so if you can't find another video that you also like i would be incredibly surprised but as i've already said thanks for watching thank you for your time as usual and as always take care i'll see you in the next video again let me know what you think about this i might actually play for an extended period of time on like a live stream with just this deck just because i really enjoy playing it and i mean i like i like the technicality of sequencing but anyway take care guys see you later